Area one, please. Good morning. I'm Martin Wiegand from Chevy Chase, Maryland. Uh, Good to have you here, Martin. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for the wonderful shareholder weekend, and thank you for the leadership and education you give your shareholders and the general public. Uh, my question. Large airlines are in the news negotiating labor contracts. They, came, they, they claim they can't pass along rising labor costs to their customers. In the annual report, you say Executive Jet is growing fast and doing great. Executive Jet seems to be able to pass along its rising labor costs to its customers. Is this because Executive Jet has a rational compensation plan that keeps employee salaries in line with billable services? If not, why does Executive Jet do well while the airlines experience troubles? Well, the big problem with the airlines is not so much what their aggregate uh, payments will be. The, the, the real problem is when, when you're in the airline business and, you're, and your wage rates are out of line with your competitors. Uh, when you get right down to it, the figure to look at with an airline, among a lot of other things, but you start with, 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 with the cost per available seat mile and then you work that through based on the, on the capacity utilization to get to the, uh, to the revenue per, or the cost per, per occupied uh, seat mile. And the, you, can, you could have labor costs or any other cost. You certainly have fuel costs up dramatically for the airlines uh, from a couple of years ago. Uh, as long as you're more efficient than your competitor and your costs are not higher than your competitor, people will continue to fly. Uh, it's when you get your costs out of line with your competitor, which was the situation that, or Charlie and I were directors of US Air a few years back, and our costs per seat mile were far higher than competitors, and that was fine where we didn't have competitors on some many of the short routes in the east, but as the southwest airlines would move into our territory and they had costs, we'll say, of, and it's from memory, but they might have had costs of below eight cents a seat mile and our cost might have been 12 cents a seat mile. You know, that, that is, uh, you're gonna get killed uh, eventually. They may not get to this route this year, but they'll get there next year or the year after. Uh, so if you're running a big airline, a Delta or United or whatever, if your costs are on parity or less labor costs than your other major competitors, that is much more important to you than the a absolute level. And uh, the NetJets service is, is, not, is not really uh, designed to be competitive with the United Airlines or, or, or an American or something of that sort. It has a different group of competitors and uh, I think we have a absolutely terrific uh, pilot force there and, and we want them to be happy but there's a lot of other ways I mean you want to pay them fairly but with our pilots for example it's extremely important to them uh, in, in many cases to be able to live where they want to and to work the kind of shifts that we can offer so uh, we attract them in, in many other ways than bidding against United Airlines or American Airlines big thing in you, you just you can't take labor costs that are materially higher than your competitor uh, in a business that has commodity-like characteristics such as airline seats. You just can't do it over time, and you can get away with it for a while, but uh, sooner or later, the nature of a capitalist society is that the guy with the lower costs comes in and kills you. Charlie, the Airline unions are really tough, and it's interesting to see a group of people that are paid as well as airline pilots with such a brutally tough union structure. And that really makes it hard in a commodity style business, and no individual airline can take a long shutdown without having considerable effects on habit patterns and future prospects. Uh, it's just a very tough business by, by its nature. Passenger rail tra travel, even in a previous era, was a pretty tough way to make a buck. And uh, nothing is all that different with the, with the airline travel. Uh, we hope that our services are 
preferred by customers more than uh, one airline seat is is preferred compared to another. Yeah, fractional ownership is not a commodity business. I mean, the people care enormously about uh, service and the assurance of safety. And uh, I don't think that, uh, you know, I don't think if you were buying a parachute, you'd want to take the, you know, necessarily take the low bid. And, and uh, yeah. uh, now with the big commercial airlines with millions and millions of passengers, people, I think, probably correctly assume that there's quite a similarity uh, in both service and safety. But uh, if you're in a business that cannot take a long strike, you're basically playing a game of chicken, you know, with your labor unions. Uh, because they're going to lose their jobs too if you close down. So you're playing a game of chicken periodically, and uh, it has a lot. It's a, there's a lot of games, you know, there, there's a lot of game theory that gets involved. Uh, to some extent, you know, the weaker you are, the better your bargaining position is. Because uh, uh, if if you're extremely weak, uh, even a very short strike will put you out of business. And the people who are on the other side of the negotiating table understand that. Whereas if you have a fair amount of strength, they can they can push you harder. But it is a it is no fun being in a business where you cannot take a strike. Uh, we faced that one time back in the early 80s, when there were we were in a kind of a death struggle in Buffalo uh, with the Courier Express. And when I bought the Buffalo News. Actually, Charlie did. He was stranded there during a snowstorm, and he got bored. So he uh, he called me and said, "What should I do?" I said, "Well, you might as well buy the paper." And uh, <laughs> so we were in this struggle. And when, but when we bought the Buffalo News, we had two questions of the management, and one of them I can't tell you. Uh, but the second one was, we wanted to meet with the key union leaders, and we wanted to tell them, "Look at." If you ever strike us for any length, significant length of time, we're out of business. You know, you can you can make our investment valueless. So we really want to look you in the eye and see what kind of people you are uh, before we write this check. And we felt quite good about the people, and they were good people. And we had one situation in 1981 or thereabouts where a very very small union, I think, less than two percent of our employees, uh, struck over an issue that the other 10 or 11 unions really didn't agree with them that much on. But they struck and the, uh, and the uh, other unions observed the picket line, which you would expect them to do in a, in a strongly pro-union town such as Buffalo. And I think, as I remember, they struck on a Monday and I remember leaders of some of the other unions actually with tears in their eyes over this because they, they could see it was going to put us out of business. And, and frankly, I just took the position then I said, look, if you come back in a day, I know we're competitive. If you come back in a year, I know we will not be competitive. And if you're smart enough to figure out where exactly the point is that you can push us to and still come back and we have a business and you have jobs, I said, you're smarter than I am, so you know, go home and figure it out. And uh, they came back in on Thursday and, and uh, we became very competitive again, but they could have, they, I mean, it was out of my hands. I couldn't make them work. And if they decided they were going to stay out long enough, we were not going to have a newspaper. And that's the kind of situation occasionally you find yourself in. And, and, and I would say the airline industry is a good example of people where people find themselves in that position periodically. Charlie, anyone? Well, the shareholders may be interested to know vis-a-vis -vis competitive advantages in our NetJets program that the day that other charter plane crashed in Aspen, NetJets refused to fly into Aspen at all. People remember that kind of thing. Yeah. 